Hey guys, welcome to the Pegasus Training Center. Today we are doing testing for the Petzl ID and the EVAC. So let's stop wasting time. Let's get inside. So today we're doing the ID and the EVAC. Here we got them both here. At first look, you can't really tell the difference. Okay, except that the EVAC has a gray handle, the ID has a black handle. And on the front, they're identical. Um, they both say ID on them. They both got the, uh, the lug on it, and they're both gold. You open them up, And they're identical. Okay, they both got the uh, safety catch there. The cams are exactly the same. But I did notice this. When these are in the locked position, the cam on the EVAC still moves. The one on the ID does not. It's locked. Right, so that brings me to the positioning on the handle. So when you turn these over, you see, can you see that? Yep. The handle here. The markings are different. Where the arrows are located on the back side. This one only has, this is the EVAC, and it says right on the handle ID EVAC. And it only has descent and store. And the marker uh, indicator is here. So the handle position only goes so far. Okay. On the ID, the ID marker is on this side. And it has descent, store, and lock. So it's got a lot more range of motion in the handle. Okay. Then when you look further at it, at the certifications, okay, you'll, you'll see all the certifications are identical. These ones are printed upside down, which is confusing. But I guess that's because the device is meant to be used upside down. Makes sense. Um, now, the only certification that the ID has that the EVAC doesn't is that EN 15151-1 and basically that's just a mountaineering mountaineering uh, braking equipment correct yeah so that it's got an additional EN certification for mountaineering braking equipment which is why this one has the belay uh, is rated for a belay device uh, not just a descent control device and it's also says right on here where you get to the NFPA stamping uh, that it's rated for descent control and belay device where the NFPA rating on the EVAC is just a descent control. Also both a T rating too, the NFPA T Correct, rating. Correct, yeah, for, for both for technical. Yes. So now that we've got that out of the way, why don't we go put them on rope and Let's do it. See what the hell they do. Yeah, let's do it. Now, somebody did mention that we spelt this wrong after we looked it on Google. So, I believe that is the correct spelling. Man, Uvers. Okay? So, Trevor's getting all kitted up. So, let's get rolling. Which one are you doing first, Trevor? Uh, the ID. That's my ID. So we'll see how it handles. I'll uh, <clears throat> ascend up a bit and then I'll try to ascend up on the descent control device. Uh, we'll just do a rope to rope and then I'll come back down and we'll see how it works. Perfect.
So what we'll do is we'll ascend in the D sender in the evac, and then we'll just come back down on it. I just want to see how the ergonomics work, sure. if it's any different internally mm -hmm. as you do that, and then we'll uh, come back down. stop all right cool i just wanted to see how uh if you let your hand off if it had like the pan auto lock stop and everything it does sweet all right well uh besides it looking awkward as hell it works it feels awkward as hell too <laughs> all right so uh that's basic rope maneuvers with them how did you how did you like uh the idea i know we were pretty biased on it um I like the idea. I have a lot of experience with the ID. Um, <clears throat> I think ascending on the descent device itself, the spiral was smoother. There was less friction running through the device. Really? Okay. Um, EVAC ID both operated the exact same, uh, just like you would expect. Descending on the EVAC can be done, but it sucks because you're pushing up. There's a, it's a lot of force to get that handle to stay up so that you can come down on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a tried and proven device. It's one of the most popular ones out there, right? So. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's a pretty similar uh, across the board, I'm sure, for a lot of people that use the ID that either love it or hate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, pause there. What kind of reading we getting? Looks so like around 62, 64 foot. So, not much different than the sparrow then. No. <clears throat> no, not at all. Okay, well, that's good to know. So, the, the amount of effort it takes to overcome the friction in the device, like when you're hauling, is around the same as the uh, the sparrow. Mm -hmm. So um, cool thing about this, what we've done, I'll just go to explain it, is because we're using the two devices, the ID and the EVAC, um, we've taken out the ASAP lock we were using as the belay device or for the backup, <laughs> and we put the uh, EVAC in there in its place. So we're just running twin tension systems basically, but for the testing of the friction, like to overcome the friction in this, we just ha uh, maintain slack, a little bit of slack in here, so it's not helping the effort um, to overcome the friction in there. Okay, stop there. Just run your rope now through the friction lug and you tell me uh, how you like it. I think I like this one better um, so far. One thing I know for sure with having experience on the ID is now that my patient's on the ground, I can turn this 90 degrees and my slack comes out. If you remember... Uh, well, the, these new ones, um, yeah. all you need to do is you'll see on here the uh, two grooves, mm -hmm. okay? They got rid of this button, but now you just put your thumb on here and Perfect. you can pan out whichever way you need to go. Perfect. It's one for, advantage over it, the uh, sparrow. Yeah, the sparrow for- It's hard for that. Yeah, so for like low angle rescue and stuff, all you need to do, put your thumb on that little groove there and you can pan out the rope in either direction. Okay, let's uh, get ready to haul them back up, but this time we're gonna haul on the evac and we'll test how the, um, 
how, how much friction it takes to overcome this. See if it's probably going to be the same. I'm uh, guessing. I would think so. But uh, let's see, because basically we're just overcoming the square cam. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but let's give it its time in, uh, on the field, and we'll see what happens. And let's uh, have a look at the reading. We'll see what we're getting on this one. So. Whenever you're ready, just gently to overcome it. Let's move in there. Yeah, so about the same. All right, so pause there. And let's have a look at the ergonomics. This is the EVAC. Now we're lowering the load on the EVAC. And you see where the handle starts to lower in its position there. And then this is the ID behind it, and you gotta come all the way to the other side before it starts to lower. So we'll head on up in the, we're using the ID, not the evac. Um, he's gonna go up, he'll do a pickoff rescue um, for the, the casualty up there. And then we'll descend down with him using the friction lug to show how easy it is or you know, like the ergonomics of it. Mm -hmm. And go from there. Sounds good. Sound good? So how did you like that one? Uh, yeah, so the two-person rescue, um, <clears throat> again, the majority of the rescue experience I have is with the ID in that configuration. Uh, I, I liked it, it went really smooth. Um, the friction horn that they've added or that you can add onto it, uh, I liked it just for the convenience that I didn't have to worry about a second beaner. Uh, you know, it was really easy to flip in, flip out when I needed to. Um, it's a really smooth device and I think it really will. What do you like comparing it to the Sparrow with the, that friction spur? I guess I did the rescue on that one, but um, with it going over the front of the device into the spur, how did you like? Um, I mean, for me, it doesn't make a difference. The only concern is that again, like we discussed it, it coils the rope. So, you know, if I was doing a two or 300 foot drop, uh, that would be an issue because then I'm going to have a coil in my rope, but it was efficient. It was safe. It really didn't take away from uh, the rescue in my opinion. It was convenient, so I like Perfect. it. Perfect. The only major, major difference between this and the Sparrow that I noticed personally was ascending in it. Uh, I found it easier to ascend on the Sparrow. I really? Felt that there, yeah, I felt there was less friction there. I've, although the pull test uh, said different, <laughs> uh, but physically it felt different when I was ascending with the Sparrow. Okay, so that was the uh, Petzl ID S and the EVAC. Um, first one, basic rope maneuvers. I mean, now we're both going to be a little biased on this one because this is like the industry standard. This is what everybody uses. However, this is the new one compared to the old one. It is a little different. So I'm curious mm -hmm. as to see um, if it stands up same as the old one. Um, so basic rope maneuvers. What did you think? Um, yeah, ascending on it, I don't think there's any change. It's still, there's a lot of friction on this device. Um, you know, we're moving over a static cam, so it's to be expected. Um, yeah, it rigs fine, it works fine. I do like the uh, new berm style that they went with. Uh, definitely, hopefully, gets a little longevity out of that. Uh, and I like the option with the groove here that we can, you know, if you're doing a single person descent, you can run it over that groove and maybe that's gonna get rid of some of the rope twist. All right, so basic rope maneuvers, what would you give it? Um, you know what, I, I liked it. It's, I wish we had one between good and awesome. Um, I think it's more awesome than good, to be honest. Then, Can I go four? 
let's can we go make for them. One? Let's yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, again, this is the device I have the most time on. Um, but it's it's a good device, and they you know they've made changes like you said, but I think they're for the better. So and yeah, so basic rope maneuvers. We're going to give it a four. Hauling and lowering. Um, I would say it would be right on par with the uh, Sparrow. Again, the one thing that you showed me uh, with that groove where you can move that to, to let slack out, that's awesome. Uh, that was my downfall on the Sparrow is I could not get that thing to give me slack. Um, so I would, like we gave the Sparrow a three. Yes. Now, I would like to give this a four just because it was, you know, of that. Um, the thumb function of paying out the rope and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna have to bring it back to a three because of the way the rope coils on it. So I'd like to give it an awesome or even a four, but I think I'm gonna put hauling and lowering with the same friction, everything. I think we're gonna have to stick it at a three with the, sure. uh, with the Sparrow. Yeah. I think, think I actually fair? preferred the EVAC in the lowering situation. Like we discussed originally, if this was in a vertical situation, that's perfect. Um, but when we were just doing our hall system where it was at ground level, it was much more comfortable to be able to work this off the top and only have to go that far, not have to worry about going all the way around the device. So that could f debate the, uh, the answer and push it back up to four. It's hard to say because there's two devices, right? Yeah. You want to go three and a half? We have a scale, but we won't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do three and a half. All right. <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> it's not quite awesome. It's just above good. It does have some good and bad yeah. things to it. And the evac, I think, is the one that gave it that half check. Yeah, that definitely, one. yeah, that was, I, I want to do a video where we use this in a, like a confined space vertical element too, and see what it would be like. Cause yeah. I know if this is a, hanging up and I only have to pull to there, that's gonna, that's gonna be a big difference. Awesome. So for the two person rescue, uh, this is the idea is what we've been using in training. We use it in the field a lot. Um, so compared to the Sparrow, uh, did you like where the friction spur was I did. on this or? Yeah, I did. It uh, definitely made it easier because I didn't have to worry about a second beaner. I didn't have to worry, you know, sometimes that, that second beaner, it can pull your rope off your berm a little bit and it just, everything stayed in line. It was very easy to use. Uh, so I, I liked it for uh, a two person rescue load. And though, you know, there's the potential for it to coil the rope. I don't find that it ever has. Um, I mean, you may have to have a heavy load on it, I think, to actually give that coil, but uh, maybe on like a higher drop, 300 foot, you know, you got the weight of the rope and everything on there too. A lot more stretch uh, in the rope, it may induce that coil, yeah. but uh, here in the training center, it doesn't seem to coil. So um, I don't know, I, I, I'm happy to give that a four. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And then uh, overall functionality at heights, functionability. Uh, yeah, it was, you know what, it's a, it's a great device, it really is. Um, like you said, industry standard, uh, I really liked it. Yeah, yeah so the, the industry standard has been the ID for a long time. And that's, we're talking about the original ID, like the old one, just before this one. This one is brand new. so. Um, I know a lot of people have started venturing out, trying out the ISC D5 and, or D4 and the um, Sparrow, Sparrow and other devices. And now the Clutch, which is a huge competitor, which we're going to be testing shortly. So um, overall functionability at heights, I think Petzl has put a lot of research into uh, making this a better device from the old one as far as the auto locking handle, the heavy duty berm, the lug on here that you can add on. It's, you know, you can buy it without the lug obviously. And then the ability with the thumb to pay out the rope under uh, low angle rescue, I think has given the functionality with this thing a lot better uh, review than its predecessor. 
I would agree. What do you think? So I would agree. I'm, I'm almost willing to give this thing an awesome. I would agree. Yeah. Yep. I think the main difference between the two. So actually, we'll get we'll get that next. We go to price and availability. That's, <laughs> that, that's that point. I'm jumping ahead, but yeah, so, I would give it an awesome. So far, this is our first device at height that's got an awesome. So I think it, you know it's going to raise the bar for the clutch. If the clutch is as good as they say it is, well, we're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see. All right. Uh, price and availability. All right. So now. If uh, you're a small, either a small department or a small search and rescue team and budget is limited, if I had to pick between the two devices, I'm going with the ID, not the EVAC. The EVAC was great, like we said, uh, in the hauling and lowering, uh, if we're putting it as an overhead, but you can't descend comfortably with it. So for that, I would pick this device that I can do everything with. Uh, you have to you know, manipulate your hand a little bit differently on it, but in my opinion, that is gonna be in my bag before this. Yeah, now this, uh, the EVAC is more of a dedicated haul lowering device. Um, it does have inside the handle, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a screw inside there that you can thread into here and stops you from opening this device when it's um, pre-rigged into a haul lowering system. Yeah. So. I think it has a great, um, it, it's a great potential for like confined space rescues and stuff or for standby rescue teams that are rescuing from above. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, for high angle rescue teams on a fire truck and stuff like that, it's very rare that that situation becomes uh, ideal all the time. Mm -hmm. Where this ID is an overall good device that can do the exact same job as this. Yeah, I agree. So if you have the money, okay, maybe focus on having set of those in a pre-rigged rescue kit. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of apartments are cheap as hell. It's fire <laughs> and service. It's fire <laughs> service. They buy all their gear from the cheapest bidder. Yep. So uh, I think a lot of fire services will be going towards an ID that can do both jobs. Yes. Okay. So price, you'll see that the um, Sparrow was at 225 American. Mm -hmm. Well, these are at 275 US. Okay. Canadian, um, the Sparrow was around 310 Canadian. So these, both of them are three, 79.95 Canadian. So it's a little bit more expensive than the uh, Sparrow. Um, but it did get a few more check marks in a lot of the, uh, the boxes here. So it may be worth it uh, for your teams. I will make a note though that the Sparrow is not NFPA certified in rating and it's also not, um, it, it's not ANSI certified. So it only has EN certifications mm -hmm. where the ID does have the ANSI rating and it does have the NFPA certifications, which will make it ideal for North American teams. Yeah. Especially like we discussed with the fire service, a lot of fire service want that NFPA rating on there. So it could come down to that. They could both be great devices and they say this has the NFP, uh, NFPA certification. So that's what we're gonna go with. Perfect. Yeah. So when it comes to availability, again, coming from, this is coming from Utah, from the Petzl head office. So it's about seven to 10 days. And in the States, this device is so popular and common that I'm sure you could pick it up same day at many locations. I would think even across Canada, um, so many shops, if you go into a rope shop, there's almost always an ID on the shelf. 100%, we have them here in stock all the time. So uh, with it being the most popular device, I'm pretty sure here you could just walk into most uh, high angle rescue suppliers and they'll have it in stock. But if it's not in stock, you're looking about seven to 10 days. Which I believe was the same as the Sparrow, right? Yeah. Roughly, give or take. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So uh, there you go. There's the ID and the EVAC. I hope you liked the review. Um, 
We are up next is the... Do you want to do the rig or the clutch? No, it's the rig. It's the the rig. rig is up next. Mm -hmm. And now the rig is almost identical to this. It doesn't have all, some of the safety features and is considered a level two and up to tool for um, rope access. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's uh, wrap up this video and get ready next week. We'll, or later on this week, we're gonna do the rig. Sounds good. Sound good? So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to uh, get ready for the next review. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.